coming and through production has changed out of all recognition in the last 80 years. It has gone from a labour intensive industry to one being highly mechanised and very technical. The horse was almost totally replaced by the end of World War II. At the beginning of the war in 1939, there were 650,000 horses, mainly in agriculture. But today, we have combine harvesters controlled by sat nets, weed and plant diseases controlled by scientific means. We no longer see the gangs of workers toiling in the fields, weeding crops. Now, the horse that we're going to use today is a Suffolk Punch. And her name is Maisie, and she's 18 years old. There are only 350 Suffolk Punches left in the country. And it's now considered to be a rare breed. And they only come in one colour, and that's chestnut. But there are seven different shades of chestnut, from light chestnut to liver chestnut. And so we're very fortunate in being able to have a horse that is a Suffolk Punch. Now, we're going to harness the horse in readiness for our day's work. Now, horses were harnessed the same age and the same routine from Land's End to John O'Grant's. And the reason for this is that the horseman, wherever he worked in the country, he could horse up and harness his horses wherever it was. And the first item to go on the horse was the horse's collar and the horse's hands. There we go. The collar goes on. And the hands. Next thing is the pack, which is going to take the white shards and the body band. organist 
and he was looking at the pipes of the church organ, which gave him the idea of developing a machine in which would have tubes that went down into the ground and it would carry the seed down into rows. Now this was an important development because before this the seed had been broadcast, but now you could drill it into rows, which meant you could control the weeds between the rows by mechanical means. And it only left the weeds between the plants that had to be removed by hand. Although Tull's system was modified over the years, this system continued as the basis of weed control until the 1950s. But when rapid strides were made in the use of herbicides, weed killers, modern herbicides are so effective that it's possible to travel all day in the countryside and not see any person weeding the crops. So there we are, our horses harnessed up and they're going to back it into the drill, ready to start the day's work. Fortunately, this, this horse is, a, is, is very quiet, so it's not fitted in around when we're trying to get it back into, into an implement. These supper horses, you can see they're very, very solid and they were great for strength and they were great principally for farm use. Days work for Carter would have been here to go to work about seven in the morning and he'd have got his clean his horse, but it brings the day's work. And he'd been out on the field by about eight o'clock in the morning and he would work on right through the day until about four o'clock in the afternoon. And the horse would be brought back and either and be cleaned, that's for sure, and then it would have been stable or at some time it would have been turned out into the into the field. And there we are. We're pretty ready to to go off.